You're listening to Stagger Cast, brought to you by Stagger Gear. All right, you ready to roll, guys? Yep. Yep. All right. Hey, guys, welcome back to another episode of Stagger Cast. This is going to be a special little shorts version with uh, Timmy Bolduck of Woodman Arms. So 20 we, minutes with Timmy? 20 minutes with Timmy, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that actually rhymes kind of good. It works. <laughs> yeah, it does work. We've been uh, getting a lot of questions on uh, the loadouts for our new Woodmans we got this year. Everything from, you know, powder to... Uh, the type of bullet and sabot, all that stuff. So we said, well, let's just get Timmy on, have him do a run through, so people can refer to this when they get their new woodman, and uh, can make sure they're shooting right and everything. So, yeah. Yeah. how's uh, how's everything going down there, Timmy? Everything's good. We finally got a rainy day down here today. I know we've had a lot this <laughs> summer, but recently we haven't. So I'm actually um, out working, and I'm going to check some trail cameras because I always try to check them on days like this. So mm-hmm. I'm going to sneak out this afternoon and go take a peek at some stuff but yeah just working away like always yep. yeah yeah you guys are busy Trying down there yeah we no. are yeah we are it's uh it's getting a little bit better we bought a lot mark's bought some machines this year and um he's got production going up a little bit but you know it's one of those deals that just they sell faster i feel like they sell faster than we can make them and unfortunately it stinks a little bit on our end because it doesn't feel that good to not be caught up but on the other hand I think it's actually a good problem to have, so yep. it is what it is. Yeah, that's def- definitely a good problem to have. I saw this weekend there was a, a whole load of them was up at M&R Gun Shop up yep. in Swan, Vermont, and I guess they had a yeah. line out the door that morning <laughs> waiting before they even opened up, and they were sold out by like 11 that morning or something. So. <laughs> yeah, I heard, the sa- I heard the same thing, and somebody had called me and told me that. They said they didn't even make it the day, and it happens every time we send them to a shop, you know, yep. every time. It's just once word gets out. That's it. They're gone, you know. So yep. you guys yeah. are the Harley Davidson of guns right now. It's just crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Remember, you know, back in the day, you had to get on a waiting list to get a get a Harley, and now that Adam yep. and I both have our Woodmans, we're like, you know, it, it, we we feel special. So it's like, you know, <laughs> slow production down a little bit. We we want to feel hey, special here. We don't want everybody having them. <laughs> hey, real real quick, real quick, I got them to you guys in a timely fashion, didn't I? Oh, I oh, hooked yeah. you guys sure. up for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's so. When we uh, posted that on Instagram, we immediately started getting inundated with questions about you know just how kind of for like the layman hunter i mean i know a lot of guys get really in depth but like when you know just uh kind of right through getting the box and putting the gun together and you can either get the scope uh mounts with it or you know set it up for open sites but um but yeah so let, i guess we can just start like yeah, take want, us right through yeah, um from the box to the loadout to what what you run to me what you think's best coming out of those things Okay. So out of the box, I'm sure you guys saw, it's really simple. It's one pin. You know what I mean? You just take the bags off of the barrel and the forehand, you take the bag off the receiver and the buttstock and it's just slides together one pin and it's pretty much ready to go. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty, that part's pretty simple. Obviously you got to mount your scope. Our boxes, you'll see uh, if you're doing a scope or even a peep site, the way our box is designed, you have to put it on yourself. So it's super simple, though. I'm sure you guys saw it. It's yeah. four screws for a peep set, and it's four screws for a scope mount. Real simple. I will say this. Anybody that gets a peep set, do not lock tight. Use blue lock tight on your screws. Anybody that's putting a scope on a Woodman, those ones you can go ahead and use blue lock tight. But okay. um, the, the, the peep sets don't do that. And there's a couple reasons why. You don't really need to because if you tighten those screws in with no lock tight and then back them back, out you'll feel that they actually get like kind of self-locked in in a way and the other problem with those if you lock tight those if you ever want to take the peep set and your front bead off and put a scope on it if you glue those things in there you're, you're going to have to use heat and it's a real pain to get them out it's just a pain in the butt and it's because it's a star head and they seem to strip out real easy and stuff so and you just don't need them okay you need to lock it on those screws so but if you're putting a scope on a little dab of the blue lock tight go ahead and bolt it down it's i think it's uh right around 28 30 uh, inch pounds of um torque on those screws and then your caps are right around 18 ish somewhere in there okay i always tell people though honestly just use your common sense like you know when you're going too loose and you know when you're going too tight just do what you know is right and you'll be fine they okay. won't loosen up right on you so now you got it all mounted and stuff and i guess now i'll take you when you go to the range so obviously i'm sure you guys know and anybody that knows woodman arms knows we 
recommend black hole 209 it's going to be one of the most important probably things that you do as far as like what you're going to shoot for you know for powder anyway you can go with pellets i get this question a lot because black horn is obviously a little bit more difficult to find at times there's mm-hmm. times where it's always out there and real easy to get but then you'll go through a month-long window where nobody can find it so i get this a lot hey can i shoot triple seven pellets or some you know some sort of pellet or whatever the answer to that is yes but i do look at it like this if you go buy a brand new car or truck and they tell you use synthetic blank oil right Mm. yeah you can probably get away from that and not blow your motor but they know what's best for it, right? It's sort of the same thing. So you can shoot triple seven pellets or any of those other kind of pellets that you want to, but you're gonna the problem is is you're not gonna hurt the gun, but you're gonna deal with all the the stuff that Blackhorn eliminates for you, being having to, to swab your barrel out every third shot just to get your bullet down. Because the problem is, is when, when you shoot those pellets, it builds a crust on the inside of your bore. And what most people deal with, and, you'll, and I obviously talk to everybody, so I hear the stories all the time about people that take a shot at a buck out in the woods, and then they're slamming their ramrod against the tree to get their bullet down, right? Mm-hmm. And the only reason that happens is just because of those pellets and those other kind of powders. It just builds that crusty you know caked on stuff on the inside of your bore and you just literally can't get your bullet past it that's when one thing that's so great about black horn Uh black horn like if you shoot one shot or one thousand you look through that barrel and it looks the same like once it's dirty it's just dirty but nothing builds in there it almost looks like yeah it almost looks like you took black dust in your mouth and just blew it right up through the barrel you know what i mean it's like yep yeah it is really caked you know it's dirty nothing is really caked you know what i mean so obviously you've heard like shots after shot after shot and i mean we have guns out there i know of guns that have you know they're close to a thousand shots with never ever having a patch or anything in the barrel oh it's crazy no No, and it it goes against everything we've ever been taught about muzzleloaders and anything we've ever experienced with muzzleloaders but it's actually nothing to do with our gun it's just blackhorn blackhorn is just that good of stuff and i will say this too the other thing with blackhorn too that i really like I definitely feel like it's it's less resistance to resistant to moisture than some of the other stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like black horn, just the way it's designed. Like I feel like some stuff can be the texture of it, whatever it is about it, can be like a sponge for moisture. And then there's other stuff <clears throat> that just moisture doesn't. You know, it's like if you put yep. a drop of water next to a sponge or a drop of water next to a pile of whatever pile yeah. of dirt the two different things right yeah black horn definitely seems to resist moisture a lot more than what i used to deal with back when i used to shoot pellets and all that stuff yeah. okay i'm gonna tell you this here's one thing i will say you'll see with when you get a woodman arms just the design of it it's pretty it's not waterproof but it's pretty resistant just the action closes mm-hmm. your primer is enclosed you know what i mean it's not wide open up there where it just it can get moisture into it real easy but i will tell you the the, i've tried to get my gun to misfire and i put it through the ringer i mean i put it through the ringer i've tracked bucks with it end of the day the thing i mean it's borderline a block of ice when i get back to my truck and i've touched it off to make sure to see if it will fire and every time i've done it and put it through where i consider like that's about as extreme as you're going to put it through in a day right there it's always fired off i did have one time that my gun it didn't misfire but it hang fired and it was really weird and i'll just tell this story real quick um but i followed a buck one day up in new hampshire snow all over the trees followed him all day long i was up on the top of a mountain there was snow everywhere and i didn't have the end of my barrel taped with with black electrical tape i had nothing yep. over it yep. so throughout the day i went through the motions of following that buck and you know the conditions um went back to got back to my truck drove back to camp put my gun up on the um leaned it up against the wall in camp there and it sat for the night got up the following morning went back down i climbed right back up on that same mountain picked up a buck track and probably by whatever i followed him for an hour and i came to this spot and i was like man i just knew it was one of those deals you just you know you just know and i knew i was like this buck is right here i just can't see him and i stood there in this spot for probably i'd say five minutes which doesn't sound long but when you're standing there looking for a deer it feels like forever and anyways three two one bam there he goes he's right out in front of me and i just didn't see him but as soon as he went he you know started bounding and i snapped my gun up and i touched it off and 
I remember in that moment right there, I was sitting there and I could not have told you if that gun had fired or not. Like I knew I felt something. I knew I heard something, but I wasn't sure if it was just the primer going off because there wasn't really any recoil. You know what I mean? It was the oddest thing. It was super odd. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm standing there and I'm just, it's all going through my mind about what just went down. And I'm like, that was really, really weird. And I, after a couple minutes, I'm like, man, did this gun even go off? And I remember thinking to myself, if somebody was with me right now and bet me a hundred dollars, like did that gun fire or not? I, I probably would have lost that bet because I didn't know the answer. So anyways, I cracked the gun open. I popped my primer out and I looked up through the breech plug and I see daylight. So the gun fired and I'm like, man, what the heck was that all about? <laughs> so what happened was the day before I had gotten a bunch of moisture and stuff down in the bore, right? In, yeah. on, in the muscle, in the bore. And what happened when I went and leaned that gun up against the, uh, the wall throughout the night, all that moisture had gone down to my bullet. And then it's, it crept around my bullet in the rifling. So I had a hundred grains of black horn down there and the top 80 up next to my bullet was soaked, but the bottom 20 next to my primer was good so when i touched it off it actually fired but it was only 20 like i said 20 grains of that 100 grains was dry so it was almost like a cartoon you know what i mean like the bullet land <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean yeah. and that's what i realized i was like that's why it was so there was it wasn't the same bang there wasn't the same recoil and that's the only thing i could come up with is like I said, down by my primer, there was just enough dry there that let the gun fire. But again, I, if I hit that buck, that bullet bounced right off. You know what I mean? Like it had no, I mean, yeah. it did it bounce right off. So that day I learned right there that if you're like your best odds of ever getting this gun to misfire, it's going to come from the muzzle. Mm -hmm. So nowadays, all I do is I just, I do a little cross with black electrical tape. I'll cut a piece, say whatever three inches long i'll go make a cross over the end of the barrel and then i'll take and just wrap around the barrel back at the tail there and secure it on there and i've shot deer shooting right through that tape it doesn't affect the accuracy you blow right through the tape so there's a little tidbit right there for i tell i take mine up at the beginning of the season and i just hunt with it all year long yep. and i've never had a problem so anyways there's a good little um Perfect, a little yep. tip for anybody that has one especially if you're tracking deer or or hunting out in rain or anything like that chances are like i said if you're going to get this gun to ever misfire it's going to be coming from the from the muzzle it's going to okay. be moisture coming that way so just eliminate it by taping it do you do you so recommend that, uh keeping the gun in the in the rig at night and keeping it out of the heat or do you uh either way i'll get Again, I've had I have so much trust in Blackhorn at this point. Yep. Like I don't I like I don't have hesitation about bringing it into my truck or in the camp at night because of the moisture from going from zero degrees to okay. eighty inside the camp. I have no I trust Blackhorn that much. So, I guess I I want to be careful about saying yes it will or no it won't. I'm telling you with my experience, I have so little problem with guns misfiring with black with these guns misfiring with black horn okay. and like i said it, and that's all i do is i just tape the end of the muzzle and and if I, and i'll be honest with you if you got any question at all if you're like man i've hunted three days out in a lot of moisture i brought it in the camp it's really cold all the things just touch it off and reload it uh -huh. you, know, you know what i mean at the end of one of those days just fire it off Give you know empty it out and chances are it'll go right off and you'll have no problem but if you got any question that's what i do if i got any hesitation at all i just touch it off and reload it tape it back up and go tomorrow mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so that's the that's the best way right there yeah okay i guess i guess what i'll do is i'll go right into the load right now um and you probably heard me say it there when i was talking about the 80 grains being soaked in 20 my load that i recommend to everybody is 100 grains of black horn by volume that's not by weight it's by volume you can I, it's right around i think it's like somewhere in the low 70s is what it weighs on a scale but if you want to weigh your powder pour 100 grains into a tube and or whatever you use for a measure pour it on a scale see exactly what it weighs and then start weighing your loads out but 100 grains seems to be like that that perfect not too much not too little amount of powder i feel through the years i've had a couple of these guns and i actually just shot with a kid uh, a friend of mine tim this weekend he was having a, he just wasn't getting really good groups with his and he called me up he said will you shoot with me and i went and shot with him every time i've ever seen a problem with like 
not the greatest groups and what everybody's talking about from a woodman it's with 120 grains of black horn so 120 okay. grains is your max load on on black horn don't ever put if you own a woodman do not put any more than 120 grains of black horn in it it's okay. it, that's the rowdiest amount of powder that you want to put in that thing a lot of people get away with it um they want to shoot it because it's maximum feet per second and all the things like i get it but I'm telling you, every time I've ever seen, like, wow, it's just not what I thought it was going to be, they come down away from uh, 120 a little bit, and the thing walks right in. It's no problem. No so kidding. I feel like if you're going to get any squirreliness at all, it's be going to be because you're at that peaked out limit of Blackhorn. Okay. So uh, I always try to tell people to get started out right at 100. So okay, and I'm telling you 99.9% .9 of these guns, if you dump a hundred grains of black horn in them with the bullet, I'll get to the bullet in one second. Um, you're just going to be like, Oh my God, it's exactly what everybody says. And I love it. It's going to be no problem at all. If you're one of those guys, it's like wants to get as fast of a round as you can start walking up, go to one Oh five, shoot three shot groups with it, go to one ten, shoot three shot groups. And, and you'll get to a spot where, your barrel will tell you like you'll start getting out of those nice tight three shot groups. You know what I mean? It'll kind of start opening up a little bit on you. And all it is, is your barrel. It's just every one of these barrels they're they're almost all the same, but they're each a little bit different. And that's just your barrel telling you what it wants. Your barrel, if you know how to do it and go through the motion with it, your barrel will tell you exactly the load it wants. It might be a hundred. It might be one Oh five. It might be one Oh eight. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, just walk right up through and find what your gun likes and and like i said if you if you want that feet per second creep right up there but as soon as you start losing your group a little bit get right back down and that's just your load right there yep. it might be 115 so okay. there it is yeah so that, that's, that's the powder and then um the bullets um 50 cal i feel like you got a million to pick from you can pretty much pick your bullet as far as 50 cal 45 cal is a little bit different story and we sell 50 cal bullets and we also sell 45 cal bullets. And to be clear, we never got into selling bullets because we wanted to like make money or anything like that. It was, it was just the reason we ended up doing it is our biggest seller is the 45 cal. You know, it's probably, I'm going to say roughly 70 to 75% of our sales is going to be 45 versus 50. Wow. The problem in the beginning was that because it was so limited, uh, 45 cal bullets out there that the ones that people could get being power belts. And there was a couple other ones, but, um, a lot of people shot power belts. They're just not a good quality bullet. And there was a lot of things that were kind of going squirrely and going wrong with them. Mm -hmm. So Mark kind of got aggravated with it. And he was like, he knew that bullet really wasn't that great. So what we did Mark just kind of went on a mission and he decided to find a bullet. And he had this crush rib sabot. It's that blue Sabbath that we sell um, with our bullets. And then he, he always liked that Sabbath. And he went and found that Fury star tip bullet. Mm -hmm. And we just put the two together. He, he bought both, put them together, and we started shooting it. And, man, I'm telling you, that bullet, and, again, I want to be clear. I'm not trying to sell bullets. I'm only saying what I'm saying because I've shot them so much, I just know they work. Mm -hmm. So, one, that bullet, the gun just likes that bullet. And what I really like about that bullet is, and I'm talking the 250 grain or the two, uh, the 225 or the 250 grain. And what I really love the most about that bullet is that bullet, it's it's um, lead core and it's got a copper wall to it, right? So that bullet has integrity to stay together. Like when you shoot a deal with that bullet, like it's not going to fragment out on you. It's almost like a 30 odd six. Uh, uh, core lock 180 yep. grain you ever you ever dug one out of a deer like oh, yeah. you, it, you'll, you'll hold it right in your hand and it's perfectly expanded mm -hmm. and that's what that the bullet that we sell we i shot deer with it and i figured out about that bullet that's what that bullet does that bullet will stay together and will expand and there's i've had guys call me and they're like well i want a bullet to fragment and blow apart and there's an argument for that. I personally don't want that, but there is an argument. That's a valid argument. That's your power belt. So power belts, like we did it one day, me and uh, Mark, we took a stack of books and laid it like it was, I don't know, call it two feet books stacked together. And we stacked them sideways and we shot a power belt into it. And then we shot one of ours into it. And then we opened up the books to find the bullet. And our bullet was all in one piece, expanded. You held it right in your hand. I should have weighed it, but we didn't. But the power belt, like it was in probably 
I'm going to say 15 pieces. I have a little Ziploc oh, wow. bag. Oh, it just splattered everywhere. And and because the, the ones that I was shooting, the power belts in the beginning were the 195 grains. They got the yellow tip and the yellow tail. Yep. And they look like they're copper. But I took a, I took it one day and I cut it in half. It turns out it's like a gold-plated ring. That bullet is all lead. Oh, it's no com- completely lead, just with a little thin layer of copper on over the over the you know the outside of the bullet. Yep. So there's uh-huh. no has no integrity to it. So the problem with that is if you get anything like less than marginal broadside shots, like a quartering two, maybe some front shoulder or anything really, to be honest with you, like that bullet scares me to death because if it hits anything, dude, that thing is just splattering in a, Mm. in a bunch of pieces and it's going to do whatever it's going to do. And I, again, there's an argument for that's a good thing because it, you might have a piece that goes up in the lungs and a piece that goes over in the heart and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I personally don't want to take the chance on that. I'd rather – I want that bullet to go right through where I'm sending it. And our bullet, I have a lot of confidence in that it's going to – like I said, it's going to stay together and it's going to expand. Mm-hmm. And I've had people give me bullets back that they've shot deal with. I'll tell you one. Um, remember how Bloods Buck Brutus? Mm-hmm. The, but that bullet, uh, the but that bullet, the second shot he took when he shot it in its neck when it was laying in his bed when he was finishing it off, yep. that bullet right there. He ended up he caped that deer out and he got it and he called me up and he's like, "Hey, I got that bullet and I want to give it to you. I want you to take it home and weigh it." So I did. I went up there one day and he gave it to me and I brought it home and that bullet was a two twenty five grain and when I weighed it, I think it was one hundred and eighty nine grains. And it was all right in your hand, perfectly expanded. And he told me, he said, that went right through his spine and his neck. It put, put a hole right through the spine wow. and was laying underneath the cape on the other side. So right there, I kind of knew. I was like, well, <laughs> if that traveled through that buck's spine and was laying under his cape on the other side, and this is what it looks like, and it still weighs 195 grains, I was like, bam, that's all I need yeah. to know. <laughs> Definitely. But it was that's the benefit to our bullet, you know, and it kind of turned into a thing for us because now we sell so like a lot of those bullets because pretty much everybody, but you know, it like I said, it's kind of a pain for us because we have to deal with selling the bullets, but we have this great gun and we just wanted to give a good bullet that people weren't going to have to deal with a bunch of the other stuff with. So yep. that's how that bullet ever came about, but that's the benefit to that bullet right there. And like I said, that, that good, the gun just shoots those bullets good. I mean, mm-hmm. with a hundred grams of corn, that bullet, you're not going to deal with any flyers. You're not going to deal with any squirreliness like you get with some of the other stuff. You know what I mean? It's yep. just, I mean, I've shot them so much at this point that it's just, you put it there and squeeze it off. It's going to land there. And that's just, it, it just makes it really, really easy. So and that's, there's your bullet. And that's the, the star tip one you're, you're saying, right? Cause I know you yeah. guys have a few different, you get ballistic tips and then yeah. or traditional hollow points, but the star tip, which is what I've heard everybody saying, that's the one to go to. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the, in the ones with the tips and stuff, those are the 50, the 50 cal ones we sell. We don't sell any 45s gotcha. with those tips or anything like it. The 45s are the 250 grain, the 225 same bullet, but then we also make a 195 grain and that's a machine fully copper bullet. We make those ourselves. Mark makes them. Mm-hmm. So that's a machine bullet, a little more precise. You know, it's down to the exact bow. It's just a really precise bullet, but I will be honest too. Here's another thing. Again, anytime I've ever seen these things squirrely, it's a lot of powder. Mm-hmm. And the other time I've ever seen them squirrely is with a really light bullet. I'm gotcha. definitely into heavier bullets now. I think you can get too heavy, but I, I those light bullets, I don't know, for some reason, I've, sh- I've had a few of these guns not in the in the 24 inch barrel that we're talking more in the, um, in the, uh, the Brux barrels, the long range ones, mm-hmm. those ones I've had guns that like I couldn't sight in with a 225 grain bullet. I bumped it up to a 250 grain bullet and I'd walk right up through and I'd hit the spot and got it. It's perfect. Yep. And okay. you just could not get that gun to sight in with a 225 grain. You know what I mean? Yep. I think it's kind of like a light arrow versus a heavy arrow. There's something mm-hmm. to be said for, you know what I mean? You can get too yep. light on things. So my personal preference, anybody that talks to me that calls and orders one of these things, I'm going to recommend the 225 or the 250. Yep. And that's the reason why is because I just feel like you're in that weight zone zone where you're just not going to deal with any any weirdness at all you know so So anyways when it rains one of those two bullets and um and sorry to cut you off but i while i'm at it i'm just going to get to the primer real quick perfect um my favorite is the remington sts the problem with those right now is they're really hard to find 
So um, you can also shoot uh, a CCI Magnum. Winchester makes a shotgun primer that's really good. Almost anything, really, to be honest with you. The biggest thing is not to shoot a muzzleloader specific primer. Mm -hmm. And the reason is a muzzleloader primer... Even though it's a 209 primer, if you put it in your hand, it looks just like a Remington STS. It's going to be a different color, but it looks they look identical. They're both 209 primers, but the muzzle loader primer is not as hot as the uh, shotgun primer. Gotcha. And with Blackhorn, you can read it on their website. It's just it's nothing to do with the Woodman Arms. It's just Blackhorn. Blackhorn yeah. needs a hot primer just to ignite it. You know, uh, you know, consistently and all. They have their reasons, whatever it is. Uh, but yeah, got to okay. use a shock primer. Those three, like I said, a Remington STS, a CCI Magnum or a Winchester, anything like that right there. And you can get outside of even any of those three, go ahead and try them in the gun. You'll probably have no problem at all, but you got to run it with, if you're running black one, you got to run it with a shotgun primer okay. just because of how hot it is. So, yep. and I remember in the beginning of this way back, it was years ago now, but I had one guy call me up and. He's like, man, I'm just shooting these big groups. He's like, it's, you know, he told me it's like whatever it was, call it 12 inch group. He's like, there's something not right. And I asked him and he was shooting our bullet with a hundred grains and he told me his primer. And I was like, Ooh, that might be it right there. Mm -hmm. He's like, really? It doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, go try this primer. He went out and got him. And I remember that guy called me back and he's like, Oh my God, this thing is a tack driver. <laughs> it was with the primer. You know what I mean? It's crazy. And I know no, that sure. sounds not but it was just the primer. As soon as he switched to a shotgun primer, he's like, this thing is unbelievable. It was just, you know what I mean? It dialed right in yep. and was shooting shooting bullseyes, no problem with it. But just like I said, having that not right primer, his group opened right up on him. So the okay. primer in itself can really open up a group on you. So it's just make sure it's a shotgun primer. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's and, good tips right there. Say, yeah, and I will say this. The reason I like the Remington FTS the best, I get that question a lot. The, the reason I like it the best is just you get the least amount of blowback out and around that particular primer. Mm -hmm. You're okay. going to get blowback around every primer, but for some reason, the SPS, I don't know what it does. I don't know why, but for some reason, it just seems to be the least amount, and that's why I like it. So back in the day when I figured that out and we decided, like, this is kind of like our favorite primer, I stocked up on them. So I have a million of them. You know okay. what I mean? I don't have to go looking for them. <laughs> yeah. Now you're going to struggle to find them. Yeah. Okay. So being said um that's the problem with the sts's i guess anybody listening to this i am going to give uh a plug to a store that i do know has some right now he bought them during covid and he's just stocked up on them um but shea littlefield it's like littlefield sporting and good or whatever it's called it's in plymouth new hampshire that guy right there i know uh he's bunch of that stuff right now he's got a ton of black horn and he's got a ton of remington sds primers so if there's anybody listening to this that's like just wants to go get that stuff take it you're gonna have to take a drive because he can't ship the stuff i don't think mm -hmm. um but right up there go see him he's got the those primers and he's got that powder right there so you can go ahead and just get stocked right up on it and good um anyways he has it and that's the only dude i know that has any of those primers right now but i he called me and he told me he said just so you know i have them if you want to send anybody my way and i can kind of do that and there you go that's where they're at right now if anybody okay. wants them yeah i'm gonna have to take so, take a drive down there myself because like you said it's hard yeah. to get find black corner right yeah. now and hard to get those primers but he's worth the he, again trip. he's got He's got both right now, so if you're smart, just go take a trip over there, go see him, um, grab your black horn, grab those primers while you're there, and you'll be good. You'll be good for at least a few seasons, you yep. know. So good, okay. yep. yeah. So that's good information right there on the load. So you're saying 225 or 250 if you're running a 45, and then about, start with 100 grains of black horn 209, and then kind of move yep. it up there to figure out what your gun likes, and then use a shotgun yep. primer. So that's that's good info there. Greg's got a question. Yeah, yeah, I just got and one real question. Quick, um, yeah, go go for it, okay. Tim. I was just going to say, just so everybody knows, too, chances are you're going to start at 100 grains, and that's where you're going to end, too. Okay. Most people <laughs> are not going to – like, don't feel like you have to go one way or the other with it. Yep. Chances are you're going to put a 100 grains in there. You're going to sight that gun right in. You're going to just shoot bullseyes with it and be like, okay, that's it. And yeah. if that happens, stay right there. Don't go looking for trouble. Stay at 100 grains. It's yep, good perfect. right there. That's, that's the load that I personally shoot. Like, when I'm – my gun, I'm shooting the 250 grain bullet with 100 grains of black horn and a Remington STS primer. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, for for us scope guys, um, just 
you know, obviously you want to bore sight your gun at, with the scope, but uh, what do you recommend when sighting it in at like starting at 50 yards as far as where you want your bullet to, to hit above the bullseye for, for accuracy up to like 100 yards Based for the, on that for the normal guy? Yeah. Okay. okay, so this is going to change a little bit different, a little bit with different loads, right? But I'm going to tell you what we figured out. Me and Mark did this with our long range one. So this is going to be smokeless with like I this particular gun I was shooting um H4198 with a 310 grain bullet so it's obviously a lot different load but I am going to tell you what we figured out if you zero these guns at 50 yards okay mm -hmm. that's going to put you a little bit high at 100 it's going to put you close to back on at 150 then at 200 you're only going to have to hold a little bit high when you wow. get outside at zeroing at like, say, 100 or zeroing at 75, it gets really weird when you get out distance. It gets super weird mm -hmm. because you're going to have to hold a whole lot higher uh, at 200. And like I said, these 45s, that's what's so nice about these 45s. It's like a fast bow compared to a slow bow, right? Mm -hmm. yep. your, pins get, your pins get tight together, and it's just – you know what I mean? Like you just have way less thinking on a slow bow. You better know if that deer is at 26 yards or 21. That matters when it's slow, okay. when it's fast, when it's fast, everything tightens up. So if you just hold your 20 on and that deer is at 26, it almost doesn't matter because you're, it's so fast. It like, again, everything's squished together. That's the benefit of a 45. Well, that all being said, that's what's so nice is if you've got to, if you can shoot out to 200 yards, like I said, when you zero at 50, just a tick high at 100, back on at 150, now, like I said, you've only got to do a little bit of compensation out at 200 yards. It's so little. That was, and, and I want to be clear, that was what we did with my gun with that other load with the H4198 and the 310 grain bullet. I haven't personally done it with my gun with the Blackhorn in the 250 grain bullet, but I know it's going to be somewhat close in there. You know what I mean? It's not going to be that far off. Okay. So zero these things, like I said, you can either zero them at 50 or zero them at 150, whatever you prefer, and then just just go and shoot it at those other distances. So if I zero at 50, I want to see what it does at 150. I want to see what it does at 100, and then I want to see the drop that it has at 200. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, those number, those things are going to tighten right up together where it, you're right on the edge of just holding on hair. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you get to that, you might be holding whatever, 12 inches above at 200, whatever, 16 inches. I mean, it can get really squirrely really fast. But that right there, like I said, zero and at 50, then go shoot 100, go shoot 150, 200. You're going to see there's very little thinking in there. And that's like the major benefit of the 45 right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. All That's right. good info right there. The worst thing yeah. about these women arms is they're beautiful, though. I mean, it's going to be a <laughs> shame when I take it in the woods and put the first scratch on it because they really are works of art. The stocks are beautiful. The the craftsmanship's there. So um, they're just you guys have done a great job with these things. Yeah, I appreciate that. And we, we definitely, I think sometimes we sacrifice speed for quality, but that's something we decided we were going to do in the beginning. And mm -hmm. that's just the way it's always going to be. Like, I think, uh, you know, the deal with a lot of these gun companies, when they sell off, the quality goes way down. Like yep. I think Mark takes a lot of pride in this gun and so do I. And it's one of those deals. Like, it's just, you know what I mean? it's going to be right when you get it. I want exactly what you just said. This thing is really nice. Everything fits right. And, and it's just how we are with type a, when it comes to this and it's the way it's always going to be. And unfortunately, like I said, I think it's, you sacrifice quantity sometimes for speed, but it's one of those deals that it's the way it's going to be. I don't want anybody being like, those things are kind of junky or anything like that. I want you to be like, this is a really nice gun. I want it to shoot really well and do all the things a gun should do for you. And we're always going to, as long as this, we have this company, that's what it will always be yeah. period. So Excellent. Yep. yeah, we take a lot of pride in it. So sounds good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, compared to like some CBAs and stuff that I've had before, you can just tell that's, you know, a super high quality gun when you're carrying it everything from everything from the way it carries to how it's put together. There's no rattling. Every piece is where it's supposed to be. There's no excess, you know, it's everything you need, nothing you don't type of gun. 
So yeah, yeah. I can't say enough yeah. about it. Just already from having it for just can't f- wait to try them out. Yeah, it's going to be awesome this season. Really, Adam's guaranteed a yeah. big buck with his. Already. I just I didn't say yeah. that. Didn't Come say on, that? no, that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I'm not going to I'm not going to be real surprised if you guys do slam big bucks with them. So. We're going to try like hell. Yeah. Yeah. It's we, pretty funny through the years. Now we get a lot of pictures. I get a lot. Mark gets a lot. Just you know, over the last bunch of years where I'll tell you what, there's been some huge bucks that have been killed by these guns. It's crazy. Like mm-hmm. there's been a lot of really nice bucks that have fallen to the Woodman arms for sure. So we're getting a lot of them out there now. And I think a lot of people have got them in their hands and they're getting hunted with more than back in the beginning. You know, you got to go through a period where you just got to get enough of them out there and hopefully people like them and tell their friends. And we're past that. Now we've kind of crested that. And now we're just kind of, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think we've built a name and people Absolutely. want them. And now it's just trying to keep up with the snowball that's going down the hill. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they're selling themselves. No doubt about it. And, uh, yeah, yeah I definitely recommend somebody to pick one up. You might have to wait a little bit, but like you said, it's worth, worth the wait. No doubt about it. And, yeah. Uh, and, and, and to be clear too, we don't feel good about the weight. It's just the way the world is right now. And yeah, yeah. it's just the way the world is. We deal with supply chain stuff. We deal with getting help. We deal with the same stuff. Anybody running a bigger company deals with, it's just the way it is, but mm-hmm. hopefully they can bear with us. But another thing I just want to say too, um, anybody that does have one, if you ever get into anything weird or whatever, my number is right on the website. You can call me anytime. It's another thing I hear all the time that, people really like that they have somebody that they can turn to that will answer the phone. We'll talk with them and all that stuff. I love to do it. So like I said, anybody ever gets one of these and it's just not working out for you, call me up, give me a buzz. We'll go, we'll work through it together. We've had guys that ship their gun back to us. We'll go and shoot them, make sure everything's good. We'll figure out the load form, get, send it back. Like we got you. Mm -hmm. We'll take care of you and just feel free. Don't be afraid to call and, talk to us and yeah yep. happy to do it that's great so. yeah the customer service is second to none too so well, that's probably yeah. a good way to wrap it up there but yeah like i said your number's on the website and you guys can get your woodman arms ordered at woodmanarms.com get all the bullets and sabots ordered on there too um and still you guys, some benoit dvds available at woodman arms there website is true well, yeah so. yeah yeah we're down to we're almost down to our last box so we have probably just over a hundred of, of each one left and they're still trickling out pretty steady and i know they're going to be gone here at some point probably in the next month or two but um yeah we're shipping those things still every day and yeah if you, anybody wants them like while we have them I, i'm sure we'll probably end up ordering some more maybe when it's uh when these do sell out and they are gone um but yeah we do have them right now so if anybody does want them yeah hop right on the website we'll ship them right to you and awesome. yeah so yeah for sure sweet all right well we'll wrap it up there you hang on the phone there for a second timmy but for those that are listening we appreciate you tuning in and hope this helps and answers some questions that we've been getting asked about the woodman arms and the loads and all that stuff so we'll see you guys on the next podcast bye